Okay, now we're going to discuss the two most important modes of operation for a BJT. And those, the first one we'll talk about happens when the base emitter junction is less than zero volts and the base collector junction is less than zero volts. In other words, both of the PN junctions are under re reverse bias. If we were looking at a PNP, the conditions would be that the emitter to base voltage is less than zero or the collector to base voltage uh, and the collector to base voltage is less than zero. In other words, if we just reverse the subscripts when we're talking about the PNP, the operation is the same as it is for the NPN. So in this mode where the base emitter voltage is less than zero, and let's start when it's near zero, the majority carrier from each region diffuses across the PN junction. So here we have electrons from the emitter diffusing across into the base region. And we have holes from the base region diffusing across into the emitter region. And because the emitter is already full of negative uh, charges or electrons and the base is already full of positive charges, these carriers get bound pretty quickly in this area and they form a depletion region at the interface. The same thing happens over at the base collector side. The charge carriers diffuse across and quickly get bound up by any of the free carriers in the other region. And because of this, no current can flow. And so they call this region cutoff. Now, if you increase the reverse bias, in other words, we make the voltage more positive on the emitter than it is on the base, we draw electrons away from the boundary, and that means that the depletion region grows. Now, this region where no current can flow looks like an insulating region, and the area that's full of free carriers looks more like a conductor. And so we model this as a parallel plate capacitor. We can do this parallel plate capacitor at the emitter base junction and the collector base junction. The capacitor at the emitter to base junction has a name in the small signal model. We call this C pi. And the collector base junction we call C mu. All right, so I've just told you that we're gonna be looking at the forward active region, or sometimes we label this as the FAR. Here, we're going to have our base emitter junction be positive, our forward biased, and our base collector junction be negative or reverse biased. And if we were looking at a PNP, we would indeed see that the emitter to base junction would be forward biased and the collector to base junction would be reverse bias. Just reversing the subscripts for the PNP, remember that. All right, so what happens here is when our base emitter junction is forward biased, we trigger electrons from the emitter region to be emitted and flow towards the collector region. The base is typically a very thin region, so most of the electrons transit directly through the base and go to the collector, and this forms our collector current, IC. Now, some of the electrons recombine with holes in the base, and this forms what we call our base current, IV. As an electron is transiting from the emitter to the base, we have holes going back from the base to the emitter. Now, electrons moving towards the collector means that we have a net negative charge moving that direction, or we reference this as a positive current moving from the collector to the emitter. For a PNP, the operation is slightly different. Here for our PNP, we start off with some hole in the emitter. It would be injected and travel to the collector. This would form our collector current. 
at the same time, an electron is going to be going back across the base emitter junction in the opposite direction. And some of these holes are going to recombine in the base with electrons, and this would form a base current. Now here we have holes going from emitter to collector. So that is the direction of current because that's a positive, uh, the, the way that we reference current, that's a, a positive current flow. All right, in the forward active region, we can write our current expression. It's just a diode current. So here we have IC is equal to IS, saturation current times E to the VBE over VT. VT is equal to our threshold voltage, or thermal voltage, sorry, and it's called KT over Q. This is approximately equal to 25 millivolts at room temperature. Depends on how cold you keep your room. But it's going to be somewhere in the ballpark of 25 to 26 millivolts. We also have beta forward, which is the current gain factor for the device. This tells us what the relative current is of the electric current relative to the base current. Typically, this is a pretty big value, greater than 100, if we're using it in the forward active region. And we also have alpha, which is equal to beta forward divided by one plus beta forward. And again, if beta is large, this is typically approximately equal to one.